Okay, number three, we have another um, example where we're going to match up the equations with the graphs below. And um, so this first one that we see is again a quadratic x squared. And its appearance, it looks to be a lot thinner, skinnier um, than the original. <clears throat> and by default, there are two that would give it that appearance. It could be a horizontal compression or a vertical stretch down here when A is greater than one. And so usually, um, unless they tell us it's a compression in the horizontal direction, we always default to a vertical stretch or compression. So we're gonna be looking for a vertical stretch. So we're looking for something, an A value greater than one, um, that's gonna stretch this out and that's all that we can see for now. So I'm looking for a number bigger than one in front of x squared. So like two, three, four, something like that um, in front of x squared. And these are absolute values, x squared, x squared. So that's a negative. So that negative would also flip it, but we don't have a flip or a reflection. Um, but this one we do. So six will work. The second option, the only thing that we know for sure, I, I can't tell if it's been stretched or compressed um, or anything like that, but I do know that it has been translated, shifted up one, two, three, four, five, six units. So the K value um, will shift it up. So I'm looking for a plus six and I will start from there. And then if I notice um, more than one, then we'll change it. So this one has a plus six, but it's negative. It means it got reflected. And ours is not showing a reflection. This plus six is in parentheses, which means it was a shift left or right, not up or down. This plus six is up. And that is the only one. So that's the only change or transformation that we will use. This third one, um, looks to be absolute value. And uh, absolute value, as you can see, this one is wider. Okay, That's what the normal one is. This one looks to be a little bit thinner. So I'm believing that this will have a, a vertical stretch because it's a lot thinner. So I'm looking for an A value in front, greater than one, in front of the absolute value. So when I'm comparing, I want something up front, two, three, four, something like that. And then I also want it to be negative because I notice instead of opening upward, this is opening downward. So that A value is gonna be negative. <clears throat> That's why we put the absolute value. So whatever the number is, the absolute value of it is bigger than one and adding that negative will just reflect it. So that's why we have that absolute value there. Um, that negative does not mean I'm looking for something less than one. Um, it just means uh, the absolute value of that has to be greater than one when we compare it. So absolute value, I want a number out front that is negative that is greater than one. Absolute value. So here's one. Absolute value is negative out front and that number two is more than one. And that is the only one. This one is negative out front, but it's uh, understood one. So this option is the one that we want. And on this equation, the only thing we can tell for certain is that it got shifted up two. So outside of absolute value this time, the K value um, will shift up two if we have a positive K. So I'm looking for a positive here a plus two and that'll be my starting point and I'll go from there. So this first one, plus two. This one also has a plus two but it's negative. It flips and ours doesn't. And this plus two is inside which would shift left to right. So there's only one uh, that could possibly match that one. All right, number four, <clears throat> we wanna write the function whose graph is absolute value, but it's shifted to the right six units. Okay, so um, H will shift it left if it's positive and 
right if it's negative. So we want to go right six units. So I'm looking for a minus six. So what I want to do here is absolute value x minus six because that's what we will see to shift right six units.